Okay, everybody, welcome back to Great Ten Religion here at St. Augustine Secondary School. I'm glad you can join us again. We're going to begin, as we always do, with a some words from our faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's, we have a reading today. It comes from 1 Corinthians. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jew or Gentile, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so the body is not made up of one part, but of many. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so that reading today is very, very um, specific, right? specifically chosen um, because of today's, uh, you know, we're going to have a lesson today and, and today's topic, diversity. But before we go any further, let's start with today's play pose it. I would like to thank Himal for today's play pose it. Thank you very much. Head on over, folks. I'm going to release it in just a second. Okay. And looks like it's up. You may begin, and we'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, looks like uh, everybody's finished. Um, although I do notice there's fourteen, there's fourteen people here, including myself. But not quite that many have done the play poses. So a couple of you, um, I don't know what you're doing right now, but please make sure that you complete those play poses. Okay. The rest of you, thank you very much, and thank you, Himal, for that entertaining uh, play pose it and episode. If you haven't finished, please pause, and uh, you may complete it at the end of our lesson today. Okay, we've got a lot of things to cover today, so let's get going. We are going to be talking about diversity. Okay, why are we talking about diversity? Well, Jesus spoke about diversity quite a bit. Okay, you may recall from last week. Um, we were we were touching on this topic a little bit, okay. We we were doing um, types of sin and and um, all kinds of uh, uh, justice um, e examples, but now we're looking at our at our communities and what is this concept of diversity? What is it about racism, discrimination, and stereotyping? Why was this so important to Jesus? Okay, well Jesus um, had lunch with the uh, sinners. With the outcasts, yeah, he chose as his best friends, um, losers, you know, people who who were not very successful in life, fishermen who couldn't fish, um, couldn't catch things, you know, drifters, wanderers. These were our first disciples, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, they were not the um, upstanding citizens um, and and saints that we uh, have come to know them as today. All right, when Jesus first met them. So clearly, Jesus did not um, discriminate. Okay. And the, the, the lesson for us today, uh, and in today's time, is never more important than right now with, uh, with what's happening all around the world and our, our society splitting in, in many different directions. Okay. And, and often segregating, which means um, separating that we need to go back and we need to revisit um, the Word of God and Jesus's teaching and to, and, and, and to find a way to bring bring us all back together right into that into that communion right into that communion that forms um, uh, community I'm going to share my screen folks and the first thing I'm going to do though before I even show you what I'm going to show you is I'm going to ask you a question. Which do you prefer? What do you think um, is a more interesting way of living in a community that is diverse with many different cultural cultures and, and peoples or in a community that is homogenous? And that means uniform. In other words, all the same. Do you prefer all the same, everyone like me, or 
a variety of different peoples. It's an interesting question because for most of human history, um, communities were, were pretty much homogenous, right? People lived among others that were very similar in, in their background. And that's still the case today. There are so many places in the world that are very, very homogenous. We live in a very unique place, okay? Uh, Canada, uh, especially Southern Ontario, is very, very diverse. But this is not the normal thing. If you go to many countries in Europe or in Africa or in South Asia, you know, millions of people are living in communities where it's a very common culture. Okay. So I'm going to share something now with you. And I want us to look at this. It's a parable. It's called the parable of the polygons. Okay. This is, let's see. Make sure I can share the whole screen with you here. Uh -huh. All right, hopefully that's uh, working. Perfect, okay. Let's go look at the parable of the polygon. So this was created um, by a couple of sociologists who decided this was like a game. It's a game of sorts, okay? And I'll post this for you later so you can play on your own. But, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag these I'm going to drag these shapes. They're squares and triangles, okay? Squares and triangles, right? And what this is is a representation of society, okay? And the different peoples, right? So how do we get from, from wanting to, 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 you know, be friendly with, with different people to being separated and segregated like we see today in many parts of our, even our own communities, okay? this unhealthy separation and this conflict that results from that, okay? So check this out, okay? I'm going to move only, um, I'm only gonna move the, the unhappy uh, shapes, okay? The ones that are not happy, right? Okay? So watch this. Um, it says here, unhappy, right? One out of six, uh, only one out of six neighbors are like me. This um, triangle is not happy because they want more diversity, okay? So happy in the center is wh where there's a th one third of the people are, are exactly like me, but then, right, um, two thirds aren't, okay? And when all the neighbors are the same, when everyone's the same nearby, it's it's uh it's kind of boring, right? It's it's sort of, you know, it's not very interesting, okay. So here we go. Now you would think it's no big deal, right? To 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 move and to live amongst just you know the right amount of people and the right kind of mix, okay. But these small decisions we make and judgments about others can really affect and 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 the whole the whole community. And, and soon over time, um, you end up getting this problem of segregation. Okay, so how does that happen? So watch this, right? I'm gonna move the unhappy person, try to find a place where they're happy, okay? There we go, right, they're happy, okay? Okay, so that's, see, that's what's happening. And you know, you could do this on your own when you have a chance, right? But you'll notice something as I'm doing this, okay? Something's happening. What 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 we end up is people getting closer and closer together to their own kind. Okay. So you may think, yeah, a little bit of diversity is okay, but not too much. Well, what happens then is you get blocks of segregation. You get blocks of of people all the same. And they separated from these other blocks. So now the squares are together, the triangles are together, okay? As opposed to being um, mixed up, okay? Right? Segregation is not is not a healthy thing. Jesus didn't like it, okay? He didn't feel it was uh, healthy when 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 the Jews were were um, segregating themselves. Uh, he being one of them from the others in society. Okay? There was conflict, right? They didn't. They didn't get along. They didn't like each other. Okay, there were problems. 
and you see some of the stories we went over, uh, like like the Samaritans and whatnot, right? Okay. So it ends up being super segregated. Okay. Um, sometimes the neighborhood just becomes uh, square. Okay, and it's and it's not their fault if no triangles want to stick around, right? So uh, a triangle neighborhood would welcome a square, but they can't help it. The squares aren't interested, right? So this guy's not happy because he's not really, you know, there's no one like him, right? So we're going to move here, put this guy here. Okay, now we've got everyone's happy, but it's not really ideal. It's separated, okay? Now watch this. Here, the unhappy shapes are automatically going to move to random spots, okay? And over time, this, look, look how much segregation happens over time, okay? So watch this. So the more this keeps going, the more separated people are becoming. And you can look around and see this in communities, right? So a community may start off with um, a variety of people move in, and then some people decide, you know what, I'm going to move because the, the, you know, there's no one else like me here or whatnot. And other people are going to come in because they see some people similar. And then you have these pockets of communities that are segregated. Okay. And this is not an ideal situation, right? Okay. So you can play with this simulation, change the percentage, okay, of how many people are like me or not like me, and how much they 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 move, and see how see how unhappy people get as you move. Um, where there's less people that are similar, right? So to get this like unhappiness, okay, and that leads to massive seg segregation. Okay. So I'm going to leave this for you guys to play with. It's kind of cute. Okay. And you try to make everybody happy. Right. You, you, you see if you can make the triangles. See, this is nice, right? It's a nice mix. But here, right, no matter what you do, they're only going to be happy when they together with each other okay it's very difficult right very difficult see All right okay so i thought that was kind of neat and cute now let's do a little jam board it's jam board time folks okay i'm going to start up a jam board now and i want everybody to contribute and in this jam board what you're going to write, all you're going to do is, you don't even have to put your name, okay? All, you, all you're going to do is put the, think of the background that you or your parents or your parents' parents, okay, uh, came from. And I want you to uh, you just write either the name or put the flag up, okay? Put the flag up. Um, so, so here, I'll give you an example. Oh, it looks like a, it blocked the pop-up here. There we go. All right. I'm hoping you'll all be able to see the Jamboard. If not, I will, I, I will send the... Uh, I, I'm going to post the link here. Okay. Oh, good. Everyone's joining. Perfect. Okay. So you're going to put up... So for example, I'm gonna put up my background, even though I'm born in Canada, my parents came from elsewhere. I'm gonna find a nice flag and show everybody where that is. Okay, so put up a flag, take you know, not the not the picture of the flag or or just write in if if you like, you can just use a sticky and just write in the name of the country. Right? Where's what's everyone's background here? Now some of you may be multiple generations. Um Canadian and you might not even know or remember, but I'm betting there's a few in the class who's who were born elsewhere or whose parents came from elsewhere. Right? Or maybe even grandparents. Okay. 
Let's see. Ah, good. We got some flags going up. Perfect. Love it. Let's see if I can get one here too. I'm so slow here. Ah, here we go. Okay. Nice. Wow. Look at that, folks. Okay. Look at these backgrounds. Excellent. Beautiful. Okay. Yes, good. Thank you. Somebody put the name of the place. Okay. That's a good idea. I think I'm going to put that too. Not everybody will know what flag this is. <laughs> Wow, how did you get that? Uh -huh. Iraq. Ah, oh. the famous singer just passed away. That was Iran. Oh, that was Iran. Oops, my apology. Wrong singer. Farsi. Farsi singer. Okay, this is great. Costa Rica, Nigeria, India, Malta. Unbelievable. Look at this, folks. Right? I wonder if you knew that there was this much diversity in our classroom. Look at this, just in our classroom alone. Right? Now, if you were in a class in, in most of these places here, and you were in a class in one of these, uh, in a city, in one of these countries, I don't think they would create a jam board like this, right? There wouldn't be a jam board like this. This is a very unique place we're in here in Southern Ontario. Look at that, Vietnam. Oh, wow. It's different. Wonderful. Yes, Jamaican and Dominican. Okay. Now, while you're filling up the jam board, I'll just continue a little bit here with, with my with my talk. So there are there are various ways that we see people in some of these um, teacher workshops that I attend and, and and that we all go to as teachers. You know, they taught they teach us how. Historically speaking, there's a number of different ways teachers would view their students, right? So if we go back in, in, in Canadian history, um, originally it was this concept where you ignore the differences, right? Oh, you know, every, everybody is the same, um, which led to many problems because then you would, you would be ignoring the challenges that some groups were facing, right? Because not everybody was the same. So if, if you had a background here in Southern Ontario um, of, of English descent, white English from England, um, or you know the early the, the, the early settlers and then uh, whatnot being very British, you, you had some advantages, right? Because you were more likely to get a better job, you're more likely to, you know, you, you had some some serious advantages, right? And if you came as a poor immigrant from some other place. Uh, you were facing some discrimination, okay? So uh, we as uh, teachers, we were taught at, at some point, ignore the differences. Well, I mean, that didn't work very well, okay? Um, and then, then we also had this uh, concept that um, we, we have to insist on the differences, okay? To insist, uh, to, to actually recognize the, 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 the differences. And then make changes accordingly, but that but that also uh, turned out to not work very well because what, what was happening was they would be generalizing and stereotyping. So, for example, there, there were there were generations where boys were um, encouraged to take technical schools, and and girls would be doing home economic courses. You know, we used to have these courses called home economics, right? Sewing and stuff like this. Uh, we even had schools. Uh, it was separated by schools. I don't know if you know the. Um, um, uh, on Kennedy Road, what's the school there? 
it's near it's nearby up there uh steels and kennedy um uh, not not central appeal turner turner fenton right <coughs> one of those two i forgot which one but when i was growing up in brampton one of them was a technical school uh, and the other one was like academics right and there was a big difference in the kind of students that went to both and and, and they noticed over time certain um groups of kids you know boys from certain backgrounds were kind of all going to this school to to the one and then others were going to you know white anglo and and female students and, and white anglo well-off <laughs> boys were going to the academic uh school and there were two buildings next to each other it, it was really nuts so what happened was this 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 discrimination became like physically you know apparent right because we were recognizing differences, but we were stereotyping. Okay, so that didn't work either, right? That was not good. And then there was this concept of, of, of color blindness, right? Okay, so we're going to recognize everybody is slightly different, or you know, all students may have different um, aptitudes or skills, but we're, but we're going to ignore the colors. But you know, that didn't work either, because then what it really did was reinforce the sort of like looking at, at everyone as, as being white, right? Um, because the teachers are all white, you know, at, at that time, most of them, right? Um, and, and it was just, you know, looking at this, the, the, by ignoring color, you end up with no color, which is white, right? So today, um, we've come a long way, right? Today, we're following very much in Jesus' footsteps, right? He didn't just recognize different people and different colors. He um, named them by name, and he sat with them uh, at the table, and he then he you know performed healings and miracles for for people of diverse backgrounds uh, and, and you know, lepers, Samaritans, you know non non Jews, right? Um, right. So today we as teachers are encouraged to recognize the, the the variety of colors, recognize the the the, the different flags, and understand those cultures right it, not stereotype you know right you, you know we're not going to suggest all kids all you know boys from from jamaican descent or all girls from india or you know are, are, are a certain way no right that's not the case everyone has their own unique skills and talents but we are we do have different cultures right we can't ignore that we celebrate that right and we all have something to contribute if we were in in school as a class we would do a cultural day right we have to bring in foods and things it'd be great we can't do that right now but um when this corona stuff is all over you know we'll be sure to do something like that um in another religion course i'm sure okay thank you very much for the uh, jam board the jam board is beautiful and a beautiful collection of flags and countries okay i love it excellent i'm going to post that i'm going to post this jam board in our Google Classroom after. All right, folks. So, uh, Southern Ontario has a history of going from, um, particularly Toronto, going from being this sort of British, Irish, you know, um, place. Uh, and within a f just a couple generations, you know, less than 100 years, becoming one of the premier multicultural cities in the world. In fact, they look to us the whole gta including brampton they look to us as a model example of how multiculturalism is working you know something jesus would have been very um proud to see very very interesting right okay and today we're even including today people who we try to um exclude purposely uh and that's the native the the uh, native groups i'm going to show you right now this map here okay it's called um nativeland.ca and this is why we have those acknowledgements. You, you may hear in the announcements um, the acknowledgement of the land that we're on, right? This land uh, belonged to this and this group. This land, this, you know, this, this um, native group um, cared for this land all, you know, up until today. And we recognize that. And, and the reason is because that, that's the case. These were the peoples who, who lived uh, on these lands. You know, that, that we have um, uh, purchased through treaties or made agreements, you know, um, fairly or unfairly, you know, you, you could study that. There's, there was a lot of questions around that. But regardless, there are these treaties and you can see them all here. Okay, so if you notice where we are, um, 
if you type here Brampton, Ontario, okay, you will get somewhere along that 313 here, which is kind of right here, okay? And if you click on that, it'll take you to the actual treaty, the actual thing that they signed between the, the, the British and the natives. And if you read it, you'll see, you know, it sounds a little bit odd, right? You know, we're not sure. Did the natives understand what they were doing? Uh, was it clear to them what they were giving up, you know, by um, giving these lands away, you know? Uh, but that's a different story. The point is, though, is that we are now recognizing the history of these peoples on whose land we are now. Um, occupying and, and living okay and that's why we have those acknowledgements because that type and they're still among us i mean native peoples are among us um in our schools in our communities okay they're part of our community right okay so let's go let's go now oh let's you know what? I have not done a Kahoot yet. You know, you guys are all Kahooted out probably. With, you know, I'm sure it's just a very popular game with all the teachers. But I thought I found this great diversity Kahoot, and I, I'm not even sure how we if, if this will work properly. Um, if this will even work on our lesson today, but I'm going to give it a shot, okay? Because I think this will be fun. Um, I'm going to start up this diversity Kahoot here, okay, I can find what I did with it, ah, there it is, and I think if I'm sharing my screen, you should be able to see the questions, correct, you should be able to see the questions, oh, okay, and you, of course, go to Kahoot.it, okay, and you should be able to play, so let's give it a shot. Let's try, you know, something we should do in class. I mean, it's popular to do in class when we're all there. You can put it up on the screen. But I'm going to see, okay. Okay, all right. There you go. And, and I'm going to assume you can see the screen. All right. Let me check my comments, see if anyone's leaving any comments, but let's get working here. Ah, here we go. All right, you're going to see a game pin come up. So go to kahoot.it and load the game pin. There it is. Okay, waiting for players. And I guess if I see some players, that means it's working. If I don't see any players. Well, it's not working. And and, uh, and what will happen is if, if I'm sharing my screen, you should see the question and you'll be able to answer on your side. Okay, and let's see. So these this is going to be questions about diversity and the concept of diversity. Okay. Let me go check the chat. Okay. Thank you, Basma. I think it's going to work. All right. Yay, we got someone. All right. All right, guys, join. Let's see. Join our game. I'll give you a minute to, to, to join. All right. And let's see how much you know about diversity. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. Kayla, Veronica, Rihanna, all right, Brooke, it's happening. Fantastic. All right, let's keep going here. This is a good way to do attendance. Right, to be able to do attendance, who, who, who gets to play? Who's playing? Now, while I'm waiting for everyone to join, um, this weekend was, uh, we had the, our, our, our youngest here, um, uh, our youngest little girl um, had her confirmation this weekend. So needless to say, and we, I was quite occupied with that, okay? It was a very special event. Those of you Catholic who have who are, you know, been through the confirmation and you know that there's a celebration, of course, with the COVID uh limitations we couldn't have a big party so we did it over two days we had just small small families that we know within our circle come by for a couple hours at a time uh, but it was very lengthy took a lot of our time and i didn't get to complete the midterm marks but the good news is i found out that they're not due till wednesday so um i'm going to be finishing them today and tomorrow 
Okay, so for those of you who, uh, I think one or two of you sent me messages about mark updates and whatnot. So if you haven't seen anything, that's because while well, I was busy with the, with the, with the, the holy confirmation all weekend long. Um, but today and tomorrow, I'll be finishing up, okay? So um, make sure everything is in, all right? There really isn't any opportunity now. I mean, if you can squeeze something, fine. But if, as long, but if I already look at it, I won't, go, I won't be going back. And I will have the marks by Wednesday morning. Okay, and then and then they will be uh, printed or sent on an email with your report cards, I think, at the end of the week. So I confirmed there are two more days left for teachers to do marks. All right, thank you very much. Looks like we got enough players. And here we go. Let's start. See what happens. Ooh, it's loud. All right. Okay, let's see who's got the answers. Now those are Oh, perfect. Okay. So those of you um, who are having trouble, that's okay, right? Uh, I'm sorry, but looks like most of you can participate. Good job. Next question. Ah, uh, which of these is not an aspect of culture? Hmm. Very interesting. That's correct. Economy, not a cultural thing. I mean, you don't, uh, on cultural day, you don't bring your economy in, right? Looks good, looks good. Which term is used to describe the combination of cultures in the United States? Oh, United States, oh, okay. Oh, we're Canada, but we're similar. Oh, no, the video's not available. So in the US next door, what do they call a combination of cultures. Now, understand in the U.S. is very different from Canada. So this is a, this is a very interesting question. Okay, where we are multicultural in the United States, they consider it something else. They consider themselves something else. Okay, instead of celebrating all their differences, they melt together into a melting pot. Okay, very unique, very uh, very different, I should say. So we are we we're, we're the unique ones, right? We have things like. Um, you know, we celebrate festival. government pays, helps pay for, you know, heritage language schools and uh, so, uh, so people can keep their culture and sell and show their culture. And there's Carabram and stuff like this, right? In the U.S., uh, not so much. Um, you know, you're American first and then you are, maybe your background is from wherever. Whereas here, you often hear people say, you know, oh, you know, who are you? I'm, I'm Italian. I'm Jamaican. I'm, you know, right? Very different. Okay. All right, GN. Next question. Ah, excellent. Another word for diversity. Which one of these is another word for diversity, folks? Oh, this is a good one. Think of what the word diversity means, okay? Right? Many, many different. Okay, many different. That's right. It's just like an array of lights on a stage show, you know. That is correct. Good job. All right. Next. Here we go. Scoreboard keeps changing with every single one. Time he's on fire. Looks like. Which of the following statements about culture is true? Are true? Which of the following statements about culture is true? Oh, only one of these is true. Well, it could be more than one. It could be all are correct. Let's see. Oh, this is interesting. Mm. Yes, very good. Well done. Okay. Oh, look at that. All right. What 
does diversity mean? Here we go. Yeah, that one was that one was a good one. Okay. Timmy's still holding the lead. All right. Race is a blank concept because there is one human race. Tricky, tricky. Ah, uh, that's correct. That's correct. Although, you know, foreign is a good guess too. Okay. Uh, scientific would be something more like um, the study, looking, observing something real, and, and race is not exactly a real concept. Um, but uh, foreign is close. You know, I would have maybe given it that. But social, meaning the concept has come up from society, from it's been made up from, from people. For various reasons okay to separate to separate to give an excuse to separate okay tricky tricky oh okay look at that brooke is now on top excellent here we go number eight who sets the standards that create a culture oh. who sets the standards that create a culture who creates culture is it one person? Is it a small group of people? No, it's everybody. Everybody is part of culture. Very good. Okay, very good. Okay. Okay, Himal, Himal's on fire. Which term refers to a fear or hatred of all things that are different or foreign? Oh, this is a good one. This is a really, really good one. This is an interesting term, and that's what it means. Okay, you could feel this way uh, about not just about people, but about other things and living things and whatever that are something that is foreign, a concept that is foreign. But uh, okay, being scared of things that are foreign or unusual. It's xenophobia, folks. Very interesting. There's an X word for you next time you play a game with the letter X, a word with the letter X. Okay. Three more questions. Which of the following best represents an example of prejudice? Ah, prejudice, prejudging, prejudge. Okay. Think of the word, prejudge. Tricky, tricky. Look, look at that. All right. Uh huh. Right. So making an assumption, prejudging based on something you observe. In this case, being their gender. Okay. All right. Two more. The merging of ideas and traits from cultures that were once separated is referred to as. Okay. So they were once separate, but now they've merged together. Okay. They have merged together. They were once separate, and now they are together which term is it folks very interesting there's two good answers here actually but one's better than the other yes yes okay and those who like star trek if everybody watches star trek to assimilate the borg would like to assimilate you okay to merge like a melting pot Last question, which innovation has led to increased interaction within the human, go oh, the modern global community, something that's been invented that has now created so much possibility to interact. Oh my goodness, I grew up, there was no such thing when I grew up, folks, when I was your age. It wasn't even, it was, you know, I don't even remember, nothing, nothing. Didn't even exist, man. Not for regular people, anyway. That's correct. Good job. Everybody got that one almost. Okay. Here we go. 
Wow, good job. Ooh. Congratulations. There you go, the top three. Excellent. All right. Thank you very much for playing, folks. That was fun. Okay, play some good terms in there. We got some good definitions. Okay. All right. So the last thing for today is we've talked about um, diversity. We've talked, uh, now I put up an article for you. I'm not going to go through it, but it's a little bit about the history of Toronto. Okay. And um, uh, Toronto's uh, cultural history, going from zero diversity to maximum world celebrated diversity. And I'm talking Toronto, I'm talking GTA. Um, I'm, I'm putting that in there for you. It's going to be part of the assignment today. Okay. Today's assignment is, is not a blog post, believe it or not. Not a blog post this time. Okay, I'm going to be doing an old school worksheet. All right. Just uh, three questions, okay, but thoughtful questions. Um, and it's called the diversity iceberg. It's already, I think, been posted uh, automatically. The diversity iceberg, okay. So you're, I want you to read about this concept of the iceberg. Remember, an iceberg has visible parts, and then it has parts that are hidden under the water, right? And there's a nice graphic for you there, okay? So what is this iceberg? Uh, how does it relate to diversity? And how do you see yourself, right? And, and what are the parts of each of us that are obvious, hidden, you know? Um, because, you know, we need to understand how, how we portray ourselves, you know, before we can even begin to understand diversity, right? Jesus made it quite clear that, you know, you focus on, on yourself first, right? And being the best person you can be, and then you can relate to others, okay? Then you can relate to others. So when he, Jesus says, do not judge, right? Do not judge. He means, you know, understand that, that we, others are judging us. So by not judging, you are showing, you are an example for other people, okay? You are an example, right? By treating people um, kindly and nicely, no matter the background. And as a matter of fact, even celebrating the background, okay? Um, not being colorblind, that, that's no good. I mean, we are different colors, right? And it's wonderful. Not ignoring differences and not stereotyping, not recognizing differences, but then, you know, making assumptions that, oh, all the people like of, of this background are like this, or all the boys are like this, you know? No, no, no. We, we see all the beautiful colors, okay? And um, so work on that, please. Uh, it's a worksheet, and it, uh, I don't think I'll get to it for midterm, maybe. Maybe, since I have till Wednesday, it looks like, so I, sh maybe I should be able to finish it up, okay? Uh, and, 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 and that'll be good, okay? Any questions about today's lesson, you can post in the chat for now, and I'm going to just look up. Um, let's take a look. What is our schedule? Okay. Let's look at our let's look at our schedule, folks. Um, what's happening in the next couple of days? Quad one calendar. Here we go. Okay. Look at that jam board. That's wonderful. Okay, quad one calendar, folks, is, what are we on, 19? So, blues, we're looking at the blues, eh? That's period two. All right, cohort A tomorrow, cohort B on Wednesday. Perfect, okay? So that'll be two good days of, of some good CPT work, um, okay? Well, uh, and then um, hopefully... You know, maybe tomorrow, maybe the next two days, I'll I'll ask to look at some of your slides, and we'll and we'll make sure that that's all coming together. Okay, so we have really good, um, really good projects to present, so we can win win some money for our charities. Oh, good news! We're also allowed to split now the money between uh, more than one charity, so we may um, award, um, you know, maybe two charities will get half the money each. Okay, depending, right? Um, because of the COVID, right? They understand the it's a different type of contest this year okay um so really you know uh there's excellent chance for you to win some money for your charity okay but putting together a good presentation 
So we'll do a little bit more on that tomorrow and Tuesday. I mean, on Wednesday. And it uh, looks like that's it. I will let you go now, folks. And I will let you go working on that worksheet. Hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Okay, I enjoyed giving it. And we'll see you tomorrow. Have All a good right, day. Bye-bye.